All right. Welcome back to the Copywriters Podcast with your host, the world's greatest copywriting coach, David Garfinkel, and a very special surprise for today's episode. I'm going to hand it over to you, David. Thanks, Nathan. And um, well, let's jump into this. We've got so much to cover and, you know, so many topics, so little time. Um, Linda Perry is a copywriter in a couple of niches, but she's on with us today to share something most copywriters simply could not talk about the way she does. Linda is a mindset coach. I know that sounds very flaky and woo-woo, but hang in there because it's not. Um, and she came about her knowledge and her wisdom in the trenches. You see, Linda learned about mindset where it really counts, in federal prisons. Not as a prisoner, but as a defense attorney and in the courtroom. Linda was a criminal defense attorney for 17 years, and she saw firsthand the difference that mindset makes in people's lives. She also learned a lot that she was able to apply to copywriting, and I'm hoping we'll be able to get her to talk about that today. Linda works with copywriters and entrepreneurs on their mindset and messaging, because while most people bellyache about money underneath earning power and success, are first mindset and secondly how you present yourself in words to the world otherwise known as messaging or positioning or branding so says she and i agree however i'm hoping that linda as an attorney you will allow me to stipulate copywriting is powerful you're responsible for how you use what you hear on this podcast and most of the time Common sense is all you need. But if you make extreme claims and or if you're writing copy for offers in highly regulated industries like health, finance, and business opportunity, you may want to get a legal review after you write and before you start using your copy. My larger clients do this all the time. Linda, aren't you glad we got that out of the way? Oh my gosh, that was quite the mouthful. I'm so happy that's over with. Thank you and welcome and thanks for joining us. Let's dive right into this mindset thing. I have heard that at Kira Hugs and Rob Marsh's events, they just call you the mindset girl um, affectionately, not sarcastically, maybe both, but mostly affectionately. Could you give us a brief rundown on what mindset is and how it affects copywriters? Well, and I love that you started off saying that it kind of gets a bad rap. Sometimes people think of it as, oh my God, it's that crystal loving thing. And that's totally not me. I kind of look at my version of what I do is practical woo. But what mindset really is, it's that combination of beliefs and sort of views that we have about ourselves and about our business, about the world. And when our mindset's strong, it doesn't mean that we are you know, on top of the world that we think the best of ourselves, what it really means is that we can face all of the challenges and not come from a place of reactivity, but really sort of reflection and rationalization. I, so, I, I like that. Let, can, can we unpack that for just a second? Yeah. So um, a lot of people think never allow yourself the luxury of a negative thought and other crap like that. And the fact is, human beings have emotions. They go up and down like the, the, uh, like the tide or like a sine wave or whatever you want to say. But what you're saying is it's, it's not that you're constantly in this Pollyanna, um, you know, stupid positivity. It's that you've got some resources underneath and you've got a way of responding to things that is not reactive and victim-y, but proactive and resourceful. And I'm putting words in your mouth, but am I getting it right? No, you're totally getting it right. I mean, it's really about coming from that place of, hey, stuff's going to happen. We're human. I mean, that's the reality. I'm not here telling you that fear is ever going to go away tomorrow. That's absolutely not true. It's about taking a look at everything. And instead of always falling into that space of like, oh my God, everybody else is to blame. The world is to blame. You're kind of able to deal with stuff. And that's that's what I equip people with so that they can actually step over their blocks and get to the success they want. So that's kind of how I view it. Okay. So it's not about creating this perfect ideal uh, world in your mind. It's about having better tools to deal with the world the way it is, is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah. And that's why it's practical. Woo. It's not about, I will never sit and tell you to meditate, to find mantras, to just 
put positive talk because I will tell you the way I actually talk about this is, is that positive talk is really like ice cream on poop. You scoop a poop <laughs> a little and you still have poop, right? Yeah. So it's not this Pollyanna kind of thing. It's really what are the tools that you need to get past some of those blocks to get. I, I have a great business idea for you. You should uh -oh. put together a bumper sticker that says no more ice cream on poop. Yeah, I got to give that credit to my mentor originally, so I didn't come up with it, but I kind of love it. It's so visual. It, it, and uh, gustatory and olfactory, and, <laughs> and not in the most delightful way either, but it certainly gets the point across, and totally. I'm glad you said it. Now, when we prepared for this, you said that you were going to give an example um, so people can, you know, of a, of a copywriter or of a marketer, um, Justin, I think, Put, and, yeah. and and walk th walk us through some of the the journey from maybe um, non supportive inner mindset to more resourceful supportive um, productive mindset. So I want to start out by saying I have Justin Blackman's full permission to talk about this. I even asked him again to make sure, but Justin's one of my dear friends and favorite people I've ever worked with because he really is an example of what you can do with you know, really shifting your mindset, not positive mindset, but shifting it. And we're, Justin was like, I think even a year ago, he was known as the funny man and he used his humor to sort of put himself out there. But the reality is, is Justin is about 10 times more than that. And so he had to sort of dig through and the best part of Justin is he was willing. And that's the first ingredient is nothing's going to change unless you're willing. And so he sat down and he started to look at all, his, all of his beliefs. And that's a lot of the work that I do is let's take a look at your belief system. And he started to disassemble all of his beliefs about himself, you know, about putting himself out in the world. So at the time, I think Abby Woodcock was the voice guide person and he was afraid of stepping on her toes, right? He's like, let, let, let's, let's unpack that a little sure. voice guide, not meaning vocal coach, meaning finding a person's voice a prospect's voice so that you can um, deliver it in your copy, right? Yeah, it's like, so in case you have other writers that come on board, they know your voice and they can just hit the ground running. I mean, these things are phenomenal tools. Great. And um, she sort of had a course that she taught about it and he kept saying, well, I don't wanna step on her toes or is there enough room for me? Those kinds of sort of self-limiting thoughts were really occupying his head and really how is he gonna put himself out there? And I'm gonna tell you that in a year, he's really dug deep and uncovered all those beliefs and he's, he's shifted it so much to this spot that's not like unbelievable, like I'm the greatest voice guide person in the world. Like that's just so unbelievable. We, we can't play those kind of tricks on our mind. But he took like little steps to get there where at this point what he's doing, he's now teaching a course with Abby Woodcock. He is put himself out there so much that he's written voice guides for big names like Amy Porterfield, you know, Tarzan Kay. He's going out there after like his, his big list. And it's something he would have never thought he was going to do about a year ago. And he's, he's teaching about it and his confidence levels, you know, we can all fake confidence, but the stuff shows. And so he's out there and the key ingredient for him was not that he didn't have the tools. He's a brilliant writer. He's really been great at this voice guide thing all along. It's just that he shifted his own belief system about how far he could go and what he could charge for it too. Could you give like one example of one thing about shifting a belief so people will understand what this looks like in the real world? Yeah. Can I, I'm going to use myself cause it's, you know, a good example I have. So, you know, you think I was an attorney, you know, I'm a certified coach or copywriter. You think I am really fine with my level of intellect. Right. But since I was a kid, I grew up with this really stupid belief. Like I was the stupid one or I was the stupid one and the cute one. And my sister was the smart one. And it sort of stopped me from really achieving major success in life. Mm -hmm. And rather than shifting the belief by saying like, hey, I'm the smartest person in the world. Like I could tell myself that, but it wasn't working. It was really using, okay, taking first a look at how did stupid really benefit me? Like, I'm the most tenacious human being in the world. Like, I am, you know, I will prove everybody wrong. I mean, stupid did some really great things in my life, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
But when it came time to shift it, it wasn't going to be like, hey, I am the biggest rock star in the world. Now, that, that was kind of faking it for a long time. But for me, shifting the belief was putting a belief in place that was about, hey, I can do anything as long as I give myself time. Now, that may not sound really sexy to you, you know, but it, it's what, when I wake up in the morning, I have, I left a career in law. I went and pursued life coaching. I finally went and became a copywriter, something I'd wanted since I was 20. All that came from a simple sentence and really understanding, hey, I can shift this. And it had to be a belief that worked for me. And that's really what I encourage everybody to do is, is find your belief that's going to shift it. And I teach people how to really uncover it. And I give people all the steps and the tools to actually get to that spot. That's so great. Thank you. You know, what's coming to my mind is the way a lot of the gurus and um, maybe well-meaning know-nothings talk about this is sort of like you take a sledgehammer to your beliefs and what you're talking about is being more like a Swiss watchmaker because that stuff's tender and it's very precise. Am I right? Oh, I love that analogy. I mean, that's such a great way of looking at it. It is. It's taking it apart. It's really looking for the lessons. It's looking for the gifts. It's really seeing what's going to work for you. And it's it's giving yourself time. I mean, it's like a muscle. I mean, or it's like winding it up. You got to keep winding it. It's not like you can just leave it, right? So you got to keep working at it. And it's something that grows over time. Okay, so so that's great. Now, I know there's so much more to cover and we're going to give people... Um, some information at the end and put them in the show notes to tell people how to get in touch with you because we can't do this all in one podcast. That was very valuable. Uh, what I would like to do is talk about the second part of what struck me when I um, started to find out about you, and that's messaging. Um, messaging in a you know authentic, uh, catchy way, what you might call branding. I, of course, have an issue with the word branding, but that's because I'm, you know, an old school copywriter, uh, direct marketing copywriter. One thing you said is what, when you're working with clients who aren't, you know, skilled and talented like copywriters, you may come up with the words, but copywriters can often do this themselves, but they might not, they might need some guidance. So could you talk about that and then maybe even relate it to Justin? So I think one of the things that I would look at is I always think even putting yourself out there does start with mindset because if you don't have the confidence in yourself, your website, I mean, is going to sit out there. I can't even tell you how many copywriters have been sitting on their website going, eh, I'll get to it, right? So I still think it all starts with that. But for messaging, I mean, one of the things that I learned as an attorney, I think, was that you really have to find what that, what is that unique thing. And people always used to be like, how, how do you defend those people? And I'm like, well, they're all human and they all have their uniqueness and they got there somehow. And it's often a mistake. And what I bring to branding about that is, is really looking at, you know, I tend to work in the same genre, but I got to find that unique thing about each person. And I think it's really goes back to that storytelling, that piece of really what is that person's story? What's going to connect that person to their audience, you know, and really combining their voice with the voice of customer. And, you know, that's really what Justin does. And I think when Justin actually found his own voice, if you will, he was able to finally stand up, combine his funny, right. And, and really put out a message that is so clear about who he helps and what he's going to do. And that story of why this is important but I think that has to be brought to every single, you know, copywriting project. What is his messaging? What does he call himself? Oh, God, what is it? He's the brand ventriloquist, which I love. I think it's my favorite thing that he says. He's the brand ventriloquist. He's, and it's so perfect. It's so Justin. It, it captures everything. So That's, that's good. And he, so he, he helps um, writers find the voice of the, of the stakeholder, the guru, the marketer the head of the company, right? The, the personality brand. Yeah. Right. And it, the other day I had to write an email for somebody whose voice he had actually done. He had done one of those guides and I had him look at the emails like, yeah, they wouldn't say that. Or do you realize you used the word admit three times? And I, it's such a great perspective when you're writing to see. And I could even see, he's like, well, you dove back into your own voice there. I'm like, I totally did. 
It's like somebody to bust you. It's great. Yeah. Well, it's, it, you know, as uh, my friend Doberman Dan says, it's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame sometimes, right? There is. So you, you get your mindset working, you get the messaging good. What about money? Money. I love talking about money. And most people hate talking about money. So, you know, the greatest thing about money is, is that it's pretty simple. Unless you start to apply these mindset issues, which by the way, you, you said something like this mindset is never a one and done. It is a lifelong project, which I know scares people some, but it's kind of gets better as time goes. It's like wine. Um, but when it comes to money, unless you get over your money issues, you're, you're never going to get what you want. You're never going to charge what, you, what you're worth. You're going to always be afraid when you're at the top, hey, when's the shoe going to drop, right? And so money is, for me, really the most basic of, of mindset issues. It's like we have so many hang-ups about it. We're told people with money are bad or like having money is, is bad. I mean, none of that is true. And so I teach people to like, where's the fact or the fiction about this? Where are the, what have you learned that you can unlearn about money. Like, what is really true here about this? And unless you can actually get over that, you're never going to get where you want. So if you have that vision to be a superstar, start with money. I mean, money is really, you know, and that's why so many people talk about it. But yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a big, big deal for people. Okay, that's good. Finally, I was hoping if you could squeeze in one or two lessons you learned as an attorney in the prisons, in the courtroom, that about copywriting, about persuasion, maybe persuading clients, persuading judges, I don't know. Um, well, first, don't hang out too much around the prisons. I mean, it gets kind of depressing, but I, I will tell you the one thing I, I learned is, is that my paper walks through the door before I ever did. So it's the same thing with copywriting. If you could get your words to do the job, the selling is easy. Right, it was the same thing when it, it was, I was a lawyer. Is if I could actually create that compelling argument, that compelling story, all I had to do was kind of show up. And I think it's the same thing with copywriting. And that's why so many of us believe words are so important. You know, there's such you know people dismiss it that no one's reading our words. But the reality is, is that you know even if they're getting through the points of you know skimming through it we are making a difference. And so for me, it's really always do your job, find that angle, find that compelling, interesting thing. I mean, I can tell you, I didn't always like my clients, but there was something to be found about each one of them that was important for a judge to know. I mean, we're all sort of that thread of humanity exists in copywriting, in, in being an attorney, in whatever business where you're really advocating for someone, find it. I, I love that thread of humanity. That's such an, a good, concise phrase. Finally, you do a little bit of private coaching and you're going to have a course coming out in September. Do you want to talk about, about that at all? Sure. So I do take a few private coaching clients um, over time. And so that's usually to see if they're a right fit. But I do a program called uh, Master Your Mindset. I do it probably about three times a year. It's a seven week group coaching program. And what I love about it, I think in the last version of it, they were like, Linda, you're great, but boy, did I love being part of this group. Like it's that, again, that thread of humanity, seeing they weren't alone and being able to shift together and using each other's stuff to like move forward. So I love Master Your Mindset. It is my sort of flagship program. I am going to be working on others um, coming up in the winter, but it is coming back out this September and I'm really excited to release it again. And and really, it helps copywriters, creative entrepreneurs. Um, it's just people who are really in that same isolated sort of workspace and really bringing them together to see some of their own mindset. Yes, reality. that's the reality. Linda, thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate it. And do you have like a central hub where people can go if they want to check out more of your okay. work? Yeah, I go to, go to stillgeniusbranding.com. I have a backslash coaching page, but I also have the master dash your dash mindset page, which is really all about my course. You can get on the wait list if it's not open at the time, and you'll be the first to know about my program and anything else I have coming up. That's awesome. Thanks. That's great. Thank you so much, uh, David. Great conversation. Awesome guest. And until next time, if you want to check out more, head on over to copywriterspodcast.com and we'll catch you later.